say you wanna talk I can see it in your eyes The clouds are building up And darkening your skies I don't know what to say I don't know what to do right now Are you telling me that doesn't deserve a cup? So in this episode of Carp Chapters, episode two, you join me exactly where we left off, fishing my awesome gravel pit syndicate. There we go, 6 a.m., the sun is rising. Doing a beast a minute, that one. <laughs> I ain't surprised, look at this old thing. What have you got in here, a body? <laughs> yeah. Hello. <sighs> With limited time on the bank, I make the most of my fishing, so join me on the journey where I try and catch fish through late summer, autumn and winter. So I'm standing just in my driveway, about to load the van full of kit, ready to start filming Carp Chapters Episode 2. Hope you enjoyed Carp Chapters Episode 1. It's probably been three weeks, maybe four, since I was last out fishing. It's a long time, but I've had things to do at home. So I took two weeks off work, but no, I wasn't fly i wasn't on holiday drinking soul beer on the beach no i was smashing walls out in my house making a new bathroom so that's still an absolute dust pit at the moment but that's on an old back burner just for the weekend because i'm going fishing and i'm taking a mate so i'm the friend i'm taking has been fishing for about two years and some of you may know him you say who is he who is he let's take a celebrity fishing trip yes it's Max Branning from East Enders taking him carp fishing, so that's going to be excellent. That's going to be brilliant filming him. He should be a natural on camera, unlike myself. He should be oh, game on with that. So yeah, the plan is head to Tesco's, get a bit of food, go and pick up Max Branning, and uh, go fishing for the weekend. Plan. First things first. Oh, to van. See you in a bit. For your trip, can't wait, man. Good man, that's what I like to hear. Yes. Are you ready? I'm ready, just gotta get my shoes on. Good man. Oh, Max Frannick. Did I have, um, I've got a double quarter pounder meal. Double quarter pounder, yeah, is that a large? Yes, but he's large. I just bit my tongue trying to eat a McDonald's and talk to you guys about how I should get a McDonald's on every trip. So yeah, Max Browning's laughing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but there you go. So yeah, just bit my tongue, eating a McDonald's. Do you reckon I should get one on every trip? To go, <laughs> every trip of the vlog, should I get a McDonald's? That was the question. Um, I think after biting my tongue, I'm going to eat my McDonald's, enjoy it. And I think the answer is definitely yes, I should. I'm ready, are you? I'm ready mate, yeah. Right, so as you gathered, we're here. It's quite busy, quite a few cars. So I think I'm gonna go in for a walk around, see what we can see. But the aim is to probably get a couple of pegs close to each other, just so we can have a bit of a social. So um, yeah, grab a bucket, walk around the lake, and uh, yeah, we'll see you when we're in the peg with all our gear. 
Oh mate, I'm knackered. Probably 200 beats a minute that one. <laughs> I ain't surprised, look at this old thing. What? What are you going here? A body? Gonna drop it in the little bit in the river. <laughs> Trying to get rid of the weeds, just down to smell. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> so there you go. You've probably realised that we're back on Tin's front and island side, where I originally started in episode one. As I said, it's quite busy. And we wanted to get somewhere where we can sort of pitch up and have a bit of a laugh, a bit of a social, as well as a good chance to try and catch a fish. That's the balance and I think on here is the best chance we've got. There's people on that side, that side and the back side. And uh, yeah, this is pretty much left, but it is a good zone anyway. So yeah, just a bit of a bit of an ache to get here. As you just realized, Craig pushing that monstrosity of a barrow, but we're here and uh, yeah, I'm pretty chuffed, pretty chuffed where we are. So yeah, get my gear sorted. And I'll see you all in a bit. Baby. Right, two rods are out, but we have one left and it's sneaky, sneaky time. So here, you can't quite see it because it's not clear anymore, but here used to be a little channel we made through there and you can stick a single rod on a couple of storm poles sticking out just through the reeds. Reason I'm doing it, I've heard a couple of carp now bosh out just the other side of here and you can't get to it around here, it's impossible. The only way is through this little gap here. I need to give it a little clear, but once I'm through there, you'll see what I mean. But yeah, it's absolutely dynamite. Really, really carpy. And hopefully I'll get me a fish. Yeah, let's have a little look. I think it's probably best if I clear some of this. But... Here we go, jungle time. Look at this. Whoa. Now this is carpy. All we do is just wade out here. It's not deep, as you can see. Literally just kind of plop two sticks. God, it's gravelly there. Oh. There we go. There we go, look at that. Got a flicker rod just off that tree on there and just have it over there. Can't be, eh? That was mega, wasn't it? Now, that's fishing. We'll have quite a slack sort of line. There we go. Ooh, lovely. I 
are you telling me that doesn't deserve a cop? Say you want a cop, I can see it in your eyes. The clouds are building up and darkening your skies. I don't know what to say, I don't know what to do right now. I was kind of hoping that the rod in the reeds would burst into life and I'd have to scramble through with my waders on to try and land a carp, but unfortunately nothing happened and I moved the rod back to the three rod buzz bar late that evening. I did however see a few fish showing over the middle rod and I was quite hopeful of a fish before nightfall. I think you've probably gathered that I don't actually know the real Max Brenning and Max is in fact an old buddy of mine I've known for many years called Craig, but boy, doesn't he look like Max Branning. The summer evening soon got away from us, but we were happy sitting around drinking tea and talking about some of the cool carp that lived in here. Me and Craig had planned this trip a while back, and it's really nice to bring friends to these sort of venues, especially Craig, he's never fished a venue like this. And the aim of the game was to get Craig one of these cool old Norfolk carp. There we go, 6 a.m. The sun is rising and I'm holding a bar of gold. The middle rod did produce, but a little bit later than I first thought. There was fish showing over those rods when I went to bed, but it took all the way until first light to get a bite. Not complaining though, so this is an awesome common, probably, I don't know, 21, 22 pound. But yeah, bar of gold. Craig unfortunately didn't catch, but it's always nice to invite friends as guesties on these sort of venues because they are special places. I think it's just a perfect opportunity to uh, invite him back for another go, don't you? So that's what we'll do. We'll slip him back and uh, we'll probably give it to about 8.30 and then we'll chip off home. But yeah, it's been a great trip. I'll see you on the next one. How you doing? Yeah, back down the lake. It's been two weeks for me. It wasn't last weekend, the weekend before, where me and Craig, we sat on island front and side, and I managed to catch that nice low 20 common. So actually, you've probably only just seen that. That was probably 10 seconds for you, but that was two weeks for me. But I'm back down. I've got a night. I'm going tomorrow about half 10. So I've got a perfect amount of time to catch a fish. I've got the best amount of time to catch a fish, actually. As you know, I don't really like hanging around in the daytime. I like to do the evenings, the mornings, and chip off. So that's exactly what I'm doing. And I'm in a zone that does a decent amount of night bites, and it's a zone I've just seen the carp. So yeah, so that's happy days. It's called the Back Bay for obvious reasons. It's round in the Back Bay of the lake. I've got a nice bit of water. No one really interferes with you. And uh, yeah, as I say, it's renowned for doing night bites. So I'm pretty happy where I am. As I say, I don't know if I just told you, I've just seen a carp. So yeah, that's that's good news. I'm gonna have one rod out towards sort of the metal bridge just over there. There's a lovely spot I've had plenty of carp from. I'm gonna have one just, uh, let me show you, just behind me here in this bay. That's done lots of fish. And the third rod, I'm not really sure, but I think I'm gonna have it just out here. Just a short chuck on a nice little spot there. So that's the plan. I think I'm gonna get all the rods out. I'm gonna get the brolly up and then have some food because I am famished. So I'm over 
on the metal bridge where I'm going to cast one of the rods from over there over to here but I usually fish this spot from the metal bridge here so the plan of action is with marker rod and float in hand I'm going to cast it to the spot I know from here pop the float up head back over there ping one of the fishing rods from there over to the marker float get the distance come back with some bait catapult it round the float reel in the marker float head back over there and we're fishing I know it's long-winded but it's worth the effort standard caught the float just a bare lead obviously I'm on the spot so I'm just gonna open the bell arm here drag it all the way back so I keep the clip on the fishing rod so after that trauma which it was I've clipped this rod up uh, put the rig on nice standard just little low line Ronnie I don't get too much tench bother around in this back bay I'm not sure why I guess it's because there's not much weed tench do love that weed but Obviously, I can't go around there now and catapult bait around that marker float because I pulled it in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just uh, going to put a PVA nugget around here, like so. Nice and tight as well. Nice and tight like so, so it doesn't come off quickly. I give me enough time to run around there with the catapult and the bait. As soon as that nugget pops up, I'll catapult some bait around it. So yeah, that's the plan. See if we can get out there first go. Well, I don't know what you're going to be able to see of this, but here it goes. Lovely. I don't want these too tight, I want them spread a bit to be fair. Somewhere over the back of the spot. I do want to move in between mouthfuls. Maybe some over that side. Maybe some this side. This side. That's one rod done. Now for the next two. Right, so this rod's going out. It's just basically bottom bait with a stringer. That was turd. Lovely old job. It's full catty. Just to there, that's on the nugget. Perfect. I'm quite happy with that one. Come on. That's not on. That one went down with a bit of a <laughs> hit the water like a bag of you know what. Someone.
excuse me, but that is well needed. That took a lot longer than I thought to get those rods out. It doesn't help, catch on your marker floating, blah, blah, blah. That, that ate up about half an hour. But yeah, I don't even know what time it is, the phone died. Um, but yeah, looking by the light levels, I reckon it's about, it's about 7, 7.30. We're in September, middle of September, it's the 17th today. Just to give you some sort of idea what time of year it is. Because by the time this comes out, obviously, it won't be now. So yeah, the rods are all out, they're all fishing. Hopefully something will happen in the night. I didn't have any food yet, I'm still starving. I didn't have a cookie just to tide me over. But yeah, I need to get some food on the go. But thought I'd just speak to you. But yeah, all rods are done, they're all baited. Just sat down, having a drink, having a chill out before I start food. Thought I'd catch up, let you know where I am. Rolly's up, we're done. I can chill out and just relax. So I'm gonna have some tea. Uh, Lewis, you know Lewis, he's down there fishing in Life Belt, a couple of swims down. Uh, I'll go and have a chat with him in a little while, meet him halfway with our receivers, that's okay. Yeah, so uh, hopefully one of us will catch, we can show you a fish in the morning, but now I'm just going to get some food on, have a couple of beers, chill out, and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the morning, maybe in the night, all depends how it goes. Someone could just write in the comments below why when the big deep fogs roll in when you can't fish in you catch nothing. A little bit of mist is fine but when you wake up and you can't see a foot past your rod tips you never catch a thing. Well I don't anyway. Always seems that way for me. So yeah, wake up this morning, deep fog as you gathered and uh, no fish. Just seems to kill it. Stone dead. Just like Hunger Games. I just thought, maybe we're in Hunger Games. Maybe the big big voice is gonna come down and go, Phew, Lewis is dead. <gasps> Lewis is not dead, I've checked on Lewis. He is absolutely fine. He hasn't caught a carp either though. So yeah, the killer fog has not killed Lewis, but has killed all the fishing. Yeah, last night was boiling, couldn't sleep in the bag. And then obviously up to about 12 o'clock. And then after that, it cools down. Big fog rolls in, catch nothing. So yeah, but got until half 10. So you never know, this fog will burn off. But yeah, more of a nighttime zone, as I say. But you never know, Lewis is in a good spot for, for a daytime bite, um, early morning bite. So hopefully he'll catch one and save the day. I don't know if you could get a better morning for spotting fish, to be fair, look at that. It's like a mill pond down there. A sheet of glass. I haven't seen any fish yet though. But I'm still looking. I've seen some tench, but no cypries. So the search continues. I think I'm just going to stay here because it is the best point of seeing the majority of the lake. This arm here is decent in the winter. And out in the middle, see there's a tench roll. I don't know if you can see that in the film, but and out in the middle, that's where the carp generally hang out when it's when it's cooler. In coming into the winter. Oh, it's raining again. Oh, never mind. I'll keep with it. Try and find some fish. Right, so I've decided to settle in the swim I've been mainly looking out of all morning. Um, just because I've seen a bit of activity out in the middle bowl but mainly i haven't seen any carp by the way zero nothing but i'm expecting to see some maybe through the day but what i'm getting at is i've decided to go in here because a mate darren who works around here has walked well he walks this lake every single day he's a carp angler as well so he walks it every single day and he has seen for the last few mornings carp show just off in front of that jetty that little sort of like call it jetty whatever you want to call it just off the edge of the island 
every morning. We haven't seen one today. Conditions have changed today. It has been blowing a southwesterly for a while. Um, not a warm wind, but it's a warmer wind than the north easterly, which is blowing today and tomorrow. Not ideal, but yeah. So I'm going to decide to go in here. I'm going to fish uh, to where he's been seeing the fish show in the mornings. Um, I've seen a little bit of activity. I don't know what it is, but it's some sort of sort of activity on the bottom. Something's staring at the bottom out on the same spot now. And there's a far margin over there where the sun shines on it. It's a dynamite area in the winter. I know it's not winter, but it's still cold. So that's a dynamite area. And that has done some fish a few weeks ago. So I've got a start here and we'll see what happens. We'll see if we can see fish. So I will move if I see some fish. So that's the plan. Go and get my gear and we'll uh, see you all in a bit. boys and girls I thought I'd show you the rig before I ping it out there it's um, nothing you ain't seen hinge diff rig on a heli with a bright bait right, it's as simple as it gets I ain't fishing a lot of um, a lot of bait this trip I'm just trying to catch a fish so that is the tactics which is going to do I've got it on all three rods that's how confident I am in that rig and these hook baits um, yeah, can't really go wrong with that. So yeah, I'm gonna ping it out and see what we can do. Right then, big truck. <laughs> oh, yummy. Right, that's a lot deeper. We're going over there. That's probably, I don't know, 26, 27 wraps, that one. It's deeper. I didn't want it on top of the two foot gravel bar. I know it's sunny, it might work, but I want it over there. Why, Christopher, was the last time, oh, don't knock that over. Why, Christopher, was the last time we saw you down here, you were in shorts and t-shirt. Well, the honest answer is that was the last time I was down here. I have actually been doing a lot of um, house renovations because the wife has told me to, and they needed to be done to be fair. Um, but yeah, that comes, that's higher on the list than fishing at the weekends because this place is actually um, closed in the weeks. It's been closed in the weeks for the last couple of months at least. Uh, only open weekends and at weekends the missus has whoosh, got me doing house renovations because it needs doing so that's why um, you haven't seen me in between that I've gone from shorts and t-shirt to snug pack and wellies but hey ho I haven't it's not all doom and gloom I have been doing some more fishing um, and I've been doing a lot of work stuff as well um, my kettle's just boiling which is good time for a cup of tea um, so work stuff what have I been doing work stuff so we went to Birmingham we opened well it's, it's been open but we did a carp open day um, which was good. Um, I've also been editing uh, a Phil Spink specimen series where I'd been out, we ran out to um, the River Itching and the River Test um, on a grayling hunt. Ooh, that's like the most carpiest non carp species, isn't it? That and perch. So, yeah, 
So um, I've been editing that. That you, you would have, well, you might have seen. That'll probably be, that'll be out before this is out, so I can talk about it. Um, and apart from that, just the normal run of the mill work stuff. Um, and I have been doing a, a little bit of fishing myself. So I've done, I did do a little trip to the Woolpack with my friend Harry. Um, we didn't catch anything. Um, a bit lame, but it was good, nice to get out with him and just, uh, just chill out really. Um, I've been doing a little bit of perching, uh, a few hours in the morning here and there, caught a few perch, but nothing massive to write home about. Uh, and I've done a couple of pike trips, um, because I like to get my pike stuff out come probably sort of end of October. So I've done two pike trips in November. Uh, one a couple of weeks ago, we had we had a few, had a couple of 19s, it was a good day. Um, and I literally just went out two days ago with my friend Tony, and we had a great day. We didn't catch anything big, but it was great just to get out on the broads on the boat, and we did catch a few as well. Far in the distance, there's a promise. It seems far in the distance. I put it on the altar, though it was mine. Let's get this puppy out. Well, I ain't gonna go far. Just, there's my other rod. I'm gonna go out that way. Nice. another couple of seconds right hello we're in <laughs> doesn't feel very big but it's a bite there we go it's not too tiny. Oh, he's only likely hooked to get him in. <laughs> Hello. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the biggest of all the jacks, aren't they? And the trebles are out. Look at that. I saw, I saw he was likely hooked. That reedy margin does look good. What a shot. Moody. What a lake. Mega place. Carried on looking for fish all afternoon and being flat calm, not a breath of wind on the lake, you thought you'd see one. But unfortunately, I didn't even see a roach fart, let alone a carp. But after what Darren had told me, I still feel I was in the best swim for a shot at a carp. I was absolutely Baltic last night and it ain't much warmer now if I'm completely honest but 5.30 this morning 
this little fella made an appearance from the right hand rod absolute meltdown actually uh knocking the storm pole off the brolly as as i went out but it is a carp be it only a small one but more importantly it's a confidence booster and we can actually get a take it was the right hand rod down the edge of the island that went which is no surprise really because as i mentioned darren has been seeing them there most mornings but what that does mean is i'm going to leave that rod there but the middle rod i'm going to change its position i'm going to pump it over to those reeds that gets the full sunlight for the other day because i do think if we're going to get any bites for the day it's going to be from that far margin where the sun just warms it up out of that wind so what i'm going to do is slip this fella back reel in the middle rod get it out there ready for when the sun starts hitting those reeds right 23 and a bit wraps 23 and a quarter wraps over to the reeds let's see if we can skim those reeds oh oh my god now that is fishing trying to get rid of some of this bow Winds changed direction. It's actually blowing the southwesterly now. That was good, wasn't it? As the water temperature drops, or in the winter, these sunny, reedy margins off the wind can sometimes be absolute dynamite spots. But unfortunately, this occasion, nothing happened and the day soon got away from me. I'm back down for some more punishment from when the last time you saw me I was in the swim next door where I had that little common and unfortunately as you gathered didn't get anything else even though it looked totally prime for another bite but hey that's fishing and that was probably getting on four weeks ago we've had Christmas in between that uh, so I hope you've all had a good Christmas a good new year You've probably all consumed far too much food, like myself, feel really fat. New Year's resolution is go to the gym, good bath, and um, yeah, stop putting crap in the old cake hole. But if you're anything like me, you still will, because I've got steak, potato for tea tonight. Ooh, how nice is that? Just going to swap hands because it gets pretty tiring. But as I say, I'm back down the lake. I've got the rods out, the brollies up, and I am fishing. So I've got tonight possibly tomorrow um, even though the weather is going to get a bit cruddy tomorrow afternoon so we'll see we'll see what happens and uh, go from there but as I mentioned I'm all out the rods are fishing uh, and my friend Lewis has actually hooked me up a royal treat here because I went to turn on the Delkims and the middle rod was in full one tone silt pig turner mode it was just a complete take but nothing was actually happened so that's gone up uh, the Swanee, that's uh, Brooken, and he's brought me down three RX Digitals um, so I can carry on fishing. So what a legend um, for doing that, really helped me out. But talking the RX Digitals, they brought me back to old times. When I was when I was younger, I used to fish with the old MMXs, with the old drop back tones, um, and just messing around with these, putting the hangers on and whatnot, took me back to them times, the simple times. I'm gonna swap back. Oh, over to the simple times when I was younger I could just go fishing I'm not saying I don't enjoy it now I still really do and I get to show you guys what I'm up to as well while I'm doing it and talking about simpler times I'm showing you what I'm up to 2022 is a new year and I've got a new lake oh, can't wait to get stuck into this one it's actually Jerry Hammond's lakes it's the Carthagena complex I've got a Brook Lake ticket starts in March and I cannot wait to get down and hopefully get amongst some of those fish in there. Some real cool ones, some real old ones, exactly like what I, I like to fish for. So yeah, really looking forward to that. And I can film on there as much as I like. Unlike this place where I can film, but it's, it's not open all the time. Um, predominantly, let's call it a, a, boat, a boating lake uh, with activities out on the water. Um, and while that's going on, us anglers aren't allowed to come down and fish 
Uh, we get given dates for when we're allowed to fish. Um, and even this year so far, the whole of May, the whole of June is no fishing. Absolutely prime times to be out on the bank as well. Uh, so that's not good, but doesn't affect me. I'm gonna be at Carfa trying to slay some of them real cool old ones. So that's an update uh, for now. All I'm gonna do now is gonna sit back in the brolly. It's getting dark. You probably can't tell on the camera as much, but it's getting dark. I'm gonna get some food on and hopefully, hopefully, and catch a carp. That's the plan. Oh, what do we have here? Steak and potatoes. As you can see, pitch black. I'm gonna eat this and I'll see you in the morning. However cold is it, it must have been minus two last night. A normal sane person would probably say, hey, I'm gonna go fishing when it's in a mild spell. Nah, not me. I just go when it's absolutely Baltic. Yeah, so, but to be fair, the times I get to go fishing are the times I get to go fishing. I have a job, as you know, I don't get to choose when I get to go. I've got deadlines and filming dates and everything's scheduled in, so I don't really get the choice but that's fishing, eh? <clears throat> that's how it goes. But so cold last night, or even my rods were frozen. The cup of juice, which I have a sip on in the night, was frozen inside the brolly, the bag, the pillow, all frozen. So there you go. I don't think it's worth me sticking it out. I've got to go um, anyway, so I'm just gonna pack everything up frozen. I'm gonna get back on the road, get home. I've got a bit of editing to get done. Um, and I'll probably come back maybe next week for another go because I really, really, really want to catch some carp, especially a January carp. Um, and that's the only way of doing it is by going. You don't catch them at home, do you? Sorry if you, if it's a bit misty inside there, but I'm having trouble with even the inside part of the lens just fogging up. I can't get around it. So that's what you've got. Till next time, catch you later. So let's have an update. Last week I came down and I was in this swim and I got completely iced in, remember? buzzers completely crispy didn't work blanked yesterday i decided to come back and have another go and i got down and the lake was frozen so i did a little bit of filming put the brolly up got the rods out of the sleeves in the hope that they might it might defrost but to be fair it was baltic and um it wasn't going to defrost so i just packed up and i went home and did today's work yesterday finished editing some Nash ZT wellies. That's done, which then frees up today when the weather is so much better. Because yesterday when I was driving down, the weather, oh sorry, the, the temperature in my van said uh, minus three. Yeah, minus three, absolutely Baltic. But today it said 4.5. And um, there's no frost on the ground. There's no <laughs> ice on the lake, which is handy. Uh, yeah, and I feel way more confident. Um, I mean the swim I was in, I went to go in yesterday and I was in a swim I was in when it was really cold um, last week because the fish are out here, they're out in this zone, 100%, people have been catching them, just not me. But winter fishing is all about being out, getting out and trying to be fishing when they do have a feed because they don't feed like they do in the mornings or in the evenings and that in the summer. The, the periods of feeding is a lot less. Um, it could even be an hour in a whole day. It could be days without bites and then a day of catching three. So that's why I'm back down. The weather is prime. I think what I'm gonna do, the rods are already out. I've put them out. All three went out perfectly fine with the same rigs, the same bait as I always use. Um, let me just swap hands because, oh, it does get a bit tiring. Um, yeah, the same rigs, the same bait, and it's worth mentioning, just in the winter especially, don't start thinking that you're not catching, someone else is catching, you need to change something, they're doing something different. That's not the case, it really isn't. You've just got to go with what you're confident, you're, what you're more confident in. And to be fair, hinge stiff rigs with those yellow baits, gooed up in the winter, I've caught tons of fish from this lake on that rig and that bait. So I ain't gonna change anything, nothing's wrong. You don't, don't feel like you have to change something because you ain't catching. That's one big mistake that a lot of people do. 
and um, yeah, you just got to be confident in what you do. So, talking of rigs, what I'm going to do is I've got a spare one. I like to get ready, make sure it's all pucker. So if I do catch a carp, I can just wrap that rod back out, clip the new hook bait, hook, hook link on, put a new hook bait on, whack it back out, and then deal with the fish. So that's as I say, in the winter, bite times can be very small, and you need to take full advantage of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the coffee on. I'm going to get a coffee on, and I'll show you the rig that I'm really confident in. And uh, hopefully, while I'm doing that, one of those will rip off. Right, so the rig we're talking about here is the hinge stiff rig. Everyone's seen a hingey. Everyone's used them. They do work. Um, mine's got a few slight little tweaks just to, um, you know, sort of customise it to how I like it. One is a bait screw on there. Uh, just makes putting the pop-ups on so much easier, doesn't it? There's no messing around with bait floss. Um, I've got a chod hammer hook here. Um, they're absolutely razor sharp, aren't they? You can't, you can't, you can't get much sharper. I mean, those... those um, sharpened hooks are, are good but blind me on here when there's so many nuisance fish there's tension that picking up picking you up dropping you and whatnot in the spring or summer soon uh naff those up so um unsharpened hook but a uh, todd hammer because they are razor um some fox bristle filament here uh in the thicker stuff they do I've... oh beep go on um it's the thicker stuff they do now i think it's a 25 pound um this is actually 30 pound um, I don't know if they do that anymore, but it's super, th super thick. Um, down to the swivel. Now you're going to notice there's a lot of loops there. There's a lot of metal work. Um, but these ball bearing swivels, look at that. They absolutely spin for England. Um, I don't really think, to be fair, once that sat like this, that the fish can see it. Really, I think we give them a bit too much credit there. Um, and that, if uh, any of you just noticed, that bead is a tungsten fly bead that is that is made of tungsten just metal bead um painted black and it's a four mil version if i remember correctly and you just crimp that onto your loop there and they just sink the pop-ups well perfectly for me anyway um they can't come off crayfish can't eat it off like they do with the putty um yeah and it's super neat it's just crimped onto 30 pound boom section down to um just a quick change sort of loop there so I can just loop them on loop them off but it's as simple as that the only thing you need to do is screw a pop-up on once you've caught a fish and uh, hoof it back out simple as so this is the stream just behind the back of the lake where all the roach seem to queue up waiting for me to come up with my live bait rod and catch them. Yep, you stay there boys, I'll see you soon. What's the chance of that? I turn off the camera for two seconds, battery goes dead, get a take. Couldn't like it, really. Couldn't like it could you? <laughs> it's crazy. What is it? Hello. Oh, oh, she's in. How we days. Not a very big one, but they all count, don't they? Oh. There we go. Oh, the water's frozen. Cool, he's nailed, look at that.
So the fish is resting in the net, that's safe. First priority is to get that rod wrapped back up and this is where that pre-tied rig comes into its own. All you've got to do, screw a pop-up on and get that rig back out onto the spot you just caught the fish. Because as I say, in the winter time, your window of opportunity can be quite small and you just never know, you might get another one. There we go, get that rod straight back out because you never know. Yeah, could it. be a feeding time, couldn't it? Yeah. I ain't got long left, but of yeah. well you never know, that might go again, might not it? He is absolutely freezing, but who cares? January carp, probably, probably low 20 common. He's cool though, I ain't complaining. Yeah, I've just been filming the rods on and off all day, as you know, but I hadn't got a take on camera. Let's try and, battery died. Went to change the battery, got a take. Standard, but I don't mind. He's a bit lively, he's like slow motion liveliness. He keeps wanting to flip but in slow motion. Oh, he's freezing. A wicked carp. And for a day session in January, you literally can't complain about that. Well, I can't anyway, especially on here. But yeah, mega chuffed with that. He's really cool. Um, hopefully, I've probably got about half an hour, an hour left before it's dark. I'll put the rod straight back out because, um, as I say earlier, that feeding window can be quite short. But yeah, you never know, something might happen before I get to go home. But if it doesn't, it's well worth getting up early this morning and coming down to the lake. Yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, wicked. Oh, let me get him back, because my hands, hands are freezing. Oh. Well, he's gone back nice and safe. And as you can probably tell behind me, it's getting dark. I've still got three rods out fishing at the moment. The brolly's still up, but I'm going to pack everything away. Then I'm going to reel the rods in and then I'm going to get off home because it was only a day session and a successful one, you may say, because be it not a massive fish, it's still a January carp and I can't complain about that really. So I'm probably going to call it ends now to episode two. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's not all about the fishing. It's just about the journey, about what I get up to, some cool slow-mo stuff, some wicked music, if I do say so myself and obviously carp I catch along the way. So if you have enjoyed it, hit that like button because it does make a difference. And if you don't already, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any more content because episode three is going to be a little bit more winter fishing, obviously. But then I'm going to be heading to Carthagena Lakes. Whew, I've got a Brook Lake ticket. I've already mentioned it. You know that. So stay tuned. If you don't want to miss that, hit the subscribe and I'll catch you later. Bye.